Afternoon, Steve. How are you? Yonder, to the I'm very well, thank you very much, considering I'm stuck in a cave up in Manishanda Guy. Are you just down the road? Are you in Sling or are you? No, no, I've got my own house in uh, Hamburg, just by the pier. Oh, right, okay. Well, I'm renting. I wish. You you up? I'm just renting, it's not my own house. (laughs) So you've been causing a little bit of a stir, Sid. So I I contacted you last week and wondered whether, because it's the 40th year of the foundation course, and you were a student with us, what, seven, eight years ago? 2012 to 13? No, 2011 to 12, I think. Was yeah, it? So yeah, yeah, then I was in 2012 to 13 in Cardiff. It, 10 years ago then. And I contacted you to see if you'd um, consider writing something because I've been putting uh, Illumini stories up, haven't I, for students mm-hmm. who've been on the course over the last 40 years. And you suggested you'd rather do something via video, which is the first I've ever done this. So No, no, it's fine. Yeah, um, you're awful. Well, I, I would al- well, I like to written something, but I'm awful in writing and reading and writing so I've been trying to well I've been writing scripts recently and that's been hard enough and then I thought just doing a video will be quite easier and it'll, yeah. it'll, well, it'll be faster for me to come across what I want to say rather than fantastic yeah so what do you want to say I mean <clears throat> well I just want to thank you first and foremost for well I left school and I had no idea about dyslexia well I've heard about dyslexia but I, I just thought it was like I don't know, I didn't really think about it till I went to did my art foundation and then he was like, he just noticed that I was awful in writing, reading and writing, and then he was like, are you dyslexic? I was like, mm. I haven't got a clue. And then I got tested and I was, and then I've had like two, three MacBooks since from the university, so it's been brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Well, a he- an, awful <laughs> lot of, an awful lot of uh, art students are dyslexic, aren't they? You know that now, yeah. okay. you, you didn't at the time. But like coming from, like a school de Fenog when he would like yeah I, I had no idea because I thought it was like a, when you're a kid you, you things like it's dyslexia is like this oh what's that I haven't got that because I thought it was pretty normal but clearly I wasn't <coughs> but then um yeah so then through getting help after the foundation I was able to get help to do like essays and stuff and then it just really benefited me of someone there to help me read through it and then read it back to me. Which before I just couldn't read it back to myself, so it didn't make any sense if I was writing. So then you did foundation with us, you were a fine artist. And I, I remember you being quite an angry, young, political fire, <laughs> live wire really, when you, yeah. you were with us, making lots of political paintings. Yeah, political I'm, paintings. I'm still like that to be honest. But like, you need to learn to switch off, though, otherwise it just takes over you. That's what I've learned anyway, because it's good enough being political, but you can't let it... Well, it's a part of everyday life, but you can't let it take over and make you depressed. Because I think no. that's, that's what happened a few years ago. Yeah, but that's key, isn't it? It's having a, key, isn't it? It's having the sense of humour as well, which you somehow you managed to weave into your... Yeah, I, draw I don't know how... It was my mate's fault, because he told... We were watching it, and we were like, it'd be funny to go on that, and we'd give him all a one to win there. <laughs> then me thinking... Yeah, let's do that. And then, oh, God. Uh, so, so, it, so, so it was all pre-planned then? It was all pre-planned, but then they, you can see, like, little bits in my face when they say things about historical, about how they think, and then I, in my head, I was like, oh, that's why I'm taking... Because the directors told me I'm not allowed to give them a one. I have to give them my reasons. So then I gave the lowest amount with fucking ridiculous reasons. I think the one with the uh, drowning uh, Welsh village was kind of reasonable, to be honest. Well, it tied into the sorts of things you used to make work about on Foundation, that did, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, so when did you film it? We filmed it before Christmas. So uh, everyone thinks I'm loaded now, but I've spent it all already. So, 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 it, so, it, was it filmed in the order that we viewed it? Then, what was your walk first? Yeah, my walk was first. It was in the order. That's why it was ideal for me because I knew if I did like a good. So, do you know everybody else's results before the final? No, 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 no. I didn't know. So I was like, I knew I was doing a bad thing, but I was like, pfft. I was going on the show to win this. So I couldn't feel bad, but I did feel for them a bit. But. They just got so tell, me about, tell me about the fallout since then. You know, I, I've seen lots of things on Twitter and initially there was some people, you got some people's backs up, but it seems from what I've seen that more and more people have, you know, uh, 
seen the funny side, but actually the serious side as well of what you've done in some some respects. Yeah, well, it's How's like, that played out now then. It's brilliant for me because I've had loads of work from SBC now, so it's worked out. Ask, but what sort of things are you going to uh, be doing? With the hands, uh, there's a thing coming out uh, soon, but I'm not allowed to disclose it yet. With hands, oh, well, don't, but, then don't do that. We won't get you into trouble. No. Oh no, it's like. I've been, we've been, me and Yuan Vaughan from London have been writing scripts for this, like a seven part mini series for Hans. So that's going to be out. Well, we're going to start filming next week. I'll need to finish the script first, but I think that is definitely happening. And then I'm doing like a few jobs presenting. Oh, are you? Fantastic. Yeah. So it's all. And it's all painting and making your music. And your music's. Is your my music, music has stopped for this week because I screwed my bloody ring finger yesterday. No, it was the day before. Now I can't play the bleed. So I'm allowed to paint for two weeks now. So let that seal. But there's a track that I keep hearing um, played over and over again. Is it PCC? And PPC. That... BBC. PPC. PPC, yeah. And that, that's going to be played during the rugby tomorrow, I believe. I believe so. I've just sent it through. It's going, I think it's on SFC, but I'm not sure if it's BBC. But yeah. they've had to delete the vocals off it, which is kind of funny. So they talk about Welsh inbreeding and how we're not developing as a country because we give our like we give the like nepotism in Wales is pretty ridiculous. It's just it's a song about nepotism in Wales, basically. <coughs> and that's that's available on Spotify. Yeah, so the, I think because we do with not though, we do everything ourselves. So it's a bit so we're, we're the producers, creators. So Nod, Nodva, then that that's linked to when you started the art. You started yeah, yeah, yeah. the art so, that went a bit but, wrong in Banga. Hey, I think. Uh, well, I think we planned the, out the opening the, night. Yeah, yeah, the opening night went a bit terrible, but it's worked out. Now we've got a it. Carried on since then. Since yeah, the so since then the group of us, like a pastor here, and then we've got the three or toys. We've all like a collective, but we just record everything ourselves rather than going to or well, paying extortionate money to go to a studio. Yeah. Like that's the funny thing about a track PPC because it literally cost me well getting the band together, but it literally cost me 120 quid to record oh. just with a, a little crap mixer of eBay and one input thing. I think we did it all ourselves, and now it's being played in the Millennium Stadium. Fantastic. So I, I always I always think that found a foundation course is the beginning of a, you know, a can be the beginning of a creative life. And it's not just about working conventionally as a painter or as a sculptor or as a designer, but it can be about making music, making yeah. television, acting. I mean, do you agree with that? Is that I agree? Um, have you heard of the band Pierce Millen? Heard of them, yeah. not heard them. Pierce Millen, the brilliant band there is I think it's led by Katie Humphreys in uh but he's around. Um, I tried to get in contact with him the other day because he's like 19 and he, I'm, I'm pretty much sure, but I'm trying to get him to do the Art uh, Foundation course. Oh, yeah? Yeah, no, because I told him he won't regret it. And like I'm trying to explain to him, he's a musician, but if you're doing the art course, you're not going to be painting the whole time. You just do a mix of everything, then he might like... It's about, it's, about, it's, about, it's about mixing with other creative people, isn't it? I remember when yeah. I did a foundation course, I got as much from that as lessons that I had with anybody. It was about lunch times with people who shared the similar sorts of interests to me, really. And a lot of that was music and things. Yeah. Anyway, they say the best, they say the best bands come out of art schools, don't they? No, it's true. Can't think of well. Yeah, definitely actually. It's like Griff Rays and everyone's gone through our foundation in Banker. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, we've had lots and lots of people going through and going going through and making yeah. music. And then um yeah, it's just important because there's diff. At the time when I left school before doing our foundation, I thought that the only thing you can do with that is paint. Mm. Or I don't know if people just have these preconceptions of what art is. So then you just think if you do art, it's just painting, but it could be screenwriting. Like, well, the arts and entertainment sector of the economy is second only to the financial one in this country. And we're never told that in schools, are we? No, no, exa um, exactly, and there's no money. Well, guess, I, 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 I retract that. We, yeah. I didn't used to be told that many years ago. I think hopefully it's just changing now. Yeah, and pe people are, are, are realizing that. But 
you know, it's, we're a creative country, aren't we? It's, and as you say, it's not just about painting. It could be about oh. making films, building sets for films, lighting films, storyboarding them. Well, it's exactly like there are jobs where you just have to paint to make something look old. Just, But like when you're leaving school, it, you don't think about that. It's just like, oh, there's an actor and there's a cameraman and a sound guy and that's about it. But no, there's loads of people, people that design the makeup. You could go on for buddy forever. It's not for me, but I prefer my music, to be honest. But. Yeah. So what's next then? Presenting, screenwriting, painting, yeah. music. All of it. Um, You're busy, are you, after uh, your programme last week then? Yeah, it's like, it's weird because people, I think like for me and my career, COVID's the best thing that's ever happened to me, <laughs> which is a weird so. Well, in the first lockdown, I got a job presenting the kids' TV programme, uh, Kerry Gray, so it's like I was essentially the Welsh Neil Buchanan for a week. And, <laughs> like, my dream... I've, is... not, I've not seen that. I'll have to look that yeah, up. So my dream is complete in the summer, so now I'm, like, I've made it now, so I don't know what to do now. <laughs> no, no. But, um, yeah, I'm going to work on an album with Crink. I just need to release an album this year, and then, a few, like, two more videos to go with the album, and then, yeah... Uh, th- think just the music, but well, getting out of hospitality is my main goal. I, I, when I was working in foundation, I was doing Tesco's, like, yeah, yeah. God. Oh, you were, you were ch- on the checkout, yeah, weren't I was on the checkout, the checkout. yeah. I've done my time, so yeah, and I, I don't mind being in front of a camera. Some people, I think, for me, it's just like part of the game, it doesn't bother me. Well, I can see you're enjoying this. I'm feeling slightly awkward, even though I've spent the last. 10 months doing video um, sessions from this cave here, but yeah, yeah. You're, quite com- you're quite comfortable, aren't you? It isn't. I used to hate being in front of the camera when I was little, though. That's the weird bit. But now I'm... <laughs> it's like, I can't sell... Pi- if nobody knows you, nobody's going to buy your paintings, eh? So, well, you need to make these kind of... Are you, selling, are you selling work as a result of this, then? Or beginning to, I suppose, it's early oh, days. Yeah, I've sold three paintings since the episode's gone out. Have you? Yeah, 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 one was like three in the quid. Uh, the other ones are really small now. So, but the idea is to get rid of this workload and then start something new. So I feel like by the time I'll, I'll be old, I'll be doing minimalism because I think my work's slowly going minimalist without me. Because I used to hate when I when I remember Helen showing me Rothko when we went to Germany. I thought it was shit, <laughs> but now it's. When you look now, when I think about it now, but at the time it was just immature, probably just to even think about it. But now they affect me, but they, like a few years ago, they didn't. So well, that's the beauty of our art and design, isn't it? And our education is sometimes the things that you're that are spoken to you about don't make sense sometimes for years afterwards. I remember when I left Cardiff, I, there were tutorials that I had with the likes of Terry Setch, and at the time I didn't understand them, and then it took six, seven years sometimes to process things and say, think, ah, makes that's sense. what you're talking about. And now it makes sense. And I suppose that's leads yeah. on to that idea, you know, of sort of leading a creative life and things sort of carrying on hmm. you know, indefinitely, hopefully, and yeah. branching off in a whole range of different ways. Hmm. So I remember doing the life drawing session with you and then you told us to spend like in that well, it's just an example, you told us to spend half an hour really concentrating on one thing. And then you told us to rip it back and stick it back together. And I was Sorry like, about that. No, no, that's the, it's the best lesson I've ever had. Because, like, if I don't like a painting, I can just rip it off and start again. It's not the end of the world. It's like not being, yeah. it's not being too precious about what you do. Otherwise, you'll just... Well, if you're afraid of making a mistake, you'll never do anything, will you? That's the point. It was like two years ago, I went to a point that I thought everything was shit. And then I just remembered that. And then I was just like, Oh, yeah, it's not bad. Just don't... Yeah, and the same can be applied, I guess, to music or, or anything that you do. Really, everything. So I was speaking with a friend with it, and then I went for a job interview, but I didn't get it. And I was dis- well, I was disappointed on the day, but then I was like, Pfft. the next day I was just fine. It was just like, it can't be too precious, but it wasn't for me. And then carry on. Something else will come up, but then that bloody hand draw went out, and look who we are now. <laughs> so, yeah. I bet yeah, things haven't stopped, have they? No. So is it? It's all all mainly positive. Then the negativity from yeah. some quarters has stopped, is it? Well, because I think they've realised that 
the three, well, three in a programme were pretty well off, and I was just really there, skin furloughed, and I was just there to win, and then, and then I win it, and then they, they think I was a bad guy, but then they realise I'm making money for a food bank, and then they just, they're like, yeah, oh. so tell me about, tell me about that, because you're making t-shirts now, aren't you? In fact, yeah. I've ordered a couple, and some of the fun, uh, some of the proceeds are going towards the food bank. Yeah, I've just, I've done the full orders, you know, so we've raised 315 quid, the food bank. And then Fantastic. we sold Brilliant. 58 t-shirts. It was just that someone on Instagram messaged me from um, Aberystwyth, the students. He was like, oh, can we get this on a t-shirt, please? I was like, yeah, I'll design something. Then the next day, uh, it was like 20 orders. And then I was like, oh, we'll make a batch of these. And then I was, it's like 60 t-shirts now. That's brilliant. Yeah, so, funny. Wow. <laughs> well so it's all positive. It's all good. And yeah, um, no, no people, no, what was it? Any, no, was it people, no, was it bad publicity? No, publicity is bad. There's publicity. no such thing as bad publicity. That's one. Yeah, that's I one. Think, I think, I'm probably, I'm probably misquoting that, but it's something along those lines. Yeah. No, it was brilliant though. My, my boss in the cafe, she was like, you're really calm about all this. And I was just like, oh, this is all I wanted really. Yeah, so, and then, um, it was kind of funny because with the hands, I used to work the hands last year in Carnarvon, but I got sacked. But now they want me back on it, so which is like, if it doesn't happen, it might happen in a few years' time. Yeah, well, you make the most of the moment. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm gonna milk it. Straight. And we, we, I'm enjoying following it anyway. And you've given me a, a few good belly laughs along the way. <laughs> I've given, I think I've given myself some laughs. Yeah, oh. good, good stuff, Lee. Well done. Yeah. Yeah, come on, Ellen. Let me talk.